I read from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 42. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. The Gospel of Mark gives us a very vivid and clear account of the death and the laying in the tomb of Jesus. As readers, he gives us the setting. It was evening, the day of preparation, the day before the Passover. He speaks of Joseph of Arimathea, refers to him as a respected member of the council who acted quickly. Joseph, too, was one who was waiting for the kingdom of God. So he ventured boldly and asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Pilate, who could not believe that Jesus had already died in that short space of time, inquired, is this Jesus dead? From the centurion and he said yes so he handed the body over to Jesus let's look at how Jesus Joseph handles the body of Jesus Joseph took particular care of Jesus's body of his remains brought linen, took the body of the cross in a very dignified way, wrapped him in linen, placed him in a new tomb cut out of rock, and placed a stone in front of it. In the Anglican liturgy, at a funeral, there are two rituals that we do within the funeral service to remind us of the deceased and this and the person's relationship with God and the church. The first, we use holy water as a sign of the person's baptism and so we sprinkle the coffin with holy water. We use incense as, it, as a sign of prayer that as that incense rises in the air, that our prayers rise to God. But also that the body of the deceased is sacred. Hence we incense the body. For the body was the temple of the Holy Spirit. These two rituals are placed in the liturgy to remind both all of us gathering together to celebrate the life of a deceased that that person was a child of God and that body was the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
Thus, Joseph took immense care of the body of Jesus. It seems to us that Joseph, as a member of the council, did not speak up at the trial of Jesus. It seems that he was a quiet participant. It is believed there was no witness, a disciple, to give an account of that meeting. And it is believed that Joseph was that pivotal source of information for the gospel writers. Thus, we believe that Joseph was part of writing the gospel story. In the in the commentary, we read that Joseph must and was a follower of Jesus secretly, together with Nicodemus. We remember Nicodemus coming to Jesus at night, asking, "How must he be born again?" Joseph of Arimathea was also one of those secret followers. For him, he never intervened. But in death, he expressed his gratitude by giving Jesus the tomb. We are reminded that our gratitude to the beloved must come when they are alive, for them to experience our love and our praise. But Joseph of Arimathea was not, was attracted to the life of Jesus while he was alive. But when Jesus died, he was broken because he saw in that death the love of God. John 12 32 reminds us in the words of Jesus when he said he was lifted up from the earth so that he will draw all people to himself. But Joseph of Arimathea in his own life must have struggled if he could have done more before Jesus' death. He must have wondered if he could be more passionate about addressing the council. Was he not afraid of what the council might think of him or discover that he was a secret disciple of Jesus together with Nicodemus? They were afraid to follow Jesus openly. But after the death, Joseph did not care about his image. Instead of burying Jesus in a pauper's grave, he found consolation in serving him in death and unknowingly fulfilling the prophet of Isaiah. His tomb will be with the rich. Joseph stood by a close tomb where Jesus' body was laid. For everyone, the rich and the poor alike. Are we afraid to be a witness for Christ? Are we afraid of showing that we are followers of Christ? There's a hymn writer, Were you there? When they laid him in the tomb. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, to tremble, to tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Let us pray. Jesus, you gave Joseph the strength to break through the fears that bound him. Send upon us the power of your spirit so that we may overcome all fears and announce the good news of your death 
and resurrection. Amen.